Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to talk about protein. So if you're interested, then keep watching. So protein is super important for overall health. It's a large component of metabolism, of a million different um, reactions in your body. It's important for overall health in a multitude of ways. It's important for muscle building, for growth. Um, it has a million different functions, literally. <laughs> so protein is super, super important. So if you want to calculate how much protein it is that you actually need, how you do that is you take your weight in pounds, divide it by 2.2, and that's your weight in kilograms, and then multiply that by 0.8. And on average, that's how much the typical healthy person needs. So if you have certain chronic diseases, then it may be higher. If you're a super athlete, and by that I mean like an ultra marathon runner or a bodybuilder, then it's going to be higher. Um, but the average person who works out 30 minutes, an hour a day, um, and is generally healthy, that's how much protein you're going to need. If you're someone who is excessively overweight, then a lot of times what I'll use is what we call adjusted weight and it's literally your, which I'll put the equation below, but it's literally your ideal weight minus your actual weight times 0.25 and then you add it to your ideal weight. I'll put all of it below. Um, and then I'll still use the 0.8. So um, if you're someone who you recognize that you're at a higher rate, you're at a higher weight and you know you need to lose weight and you're not at a higher weight because you have large amounts of muscle, then use the adjusted weight and then calculate it that way. So a lot of times when I calculate um, people's protein needs, they're kind of shocked by how little we actually need. Um, and it's so true. I think I need, or I know, I know I need less than 40 grams of protein a day, which is barely anything. You know, like you can find protein bars with 40 grams of protein in it. Um, and so when calculating your protein, you might be a little shocked at how little you actually need versus how much as Americans we actually consume. So a lot of times we find, or I find that people consume almost double what they actually need. And for whatever reason, we have it in our heads that I guess protein equals muscle, which equals attractiveness or the more protein we consume, the more muscle we're going to have, um, even if we don't work out, <laughs> um, and things like that. And I know a lot of it has to do with marketing industries and the diet industry. The diet industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And a lot of times, unfortunately, some of the organizations don't have your health in mind. It's all about the dollar signs. Um, which is fine, but it's good as a consumer to recognize that. And a lot of different products now are pushing high protein this, high protein that, and when in actuality you don't actually need it. If you're someone who you're consuming a well-balanced, healthy diet, whether you eat meat, whether you're vegetarian, whether you're vegan, if you're intentional about getting the protein you need and just consuming a variety of different food groups. So consuming lean protein, healthy fat, um, healthy carb, then you'll be getting the protein you need. I have never seen um, a healthy person, a healthy person who didn't have any chronic diseases have protein malnutrition. Granted, I've seen it in really, really sick patients who hadn't been eating for months at a time. But if you're someone who you're generally healthy, you don't have a life-threatening chronic disease, then you're getting the protein you need. Um, we see protein malnutrition for the most part in third world countries. Um, and when we do see it in the United States, it's because patients aren't eating because they're really, really sick. It's not because they're eating the amount they should and they're just not getting enough protein is that they're not eating at all. And that's really something to keep in mind of you never hear people say, oh, I got my labs checked and um, I was protein deficient. It's just not the case. Um, 
your protein can be a little low or on the lower side, and that could be for a multitude of reasons. The markers that we use to check your protein are really, really sensitive to any type of inflammation. So 90% of the people that get admitted to the hospital, if we check their protein levels, they're going to be on the lower side just because they're sick and their body's inflamed. And as a result, those levels drop. Um, they're called negative acute phase proteins and they drop. Um, and so, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Um, the majority of people are not going to be protein deficient and the majority of people are getting the protein they need. So kind of um, the next segment I wanted to get in was talking about processed protein products. And so these are things like um, the protein bars, um, the protein powders, the protein shakes and things like that. And whereas there are some products that are healthy and by healthy, I mean, I associate health with the ingredients are as fresh as possible. So I associate healthy products by when I look at the ingredients label, it's a short ingredients label and I know what every single thing is. There's, it's not packed with a bunch of preservatives and additives and chemicals and junk. And so there are some high protein um, processed products out there that are um, healthier and that the companies have done a good job about making them as healthy as possible with higher protein. Um, however, a lot of them are just pure crap. A lot of them, if you read the ingredients, you don't know what half of them are and the ingredients label takes up half of the back of the bar. And so um, I encourage you, if you're someone who you consume protein powders and protein bars and protein shakes and stuff like that, A, read the ingredients and make sure that you're consuming high quality products that aren't just chemicals, but that it's fresh ingredients that they ground up and that your source of protein is a healthy source of protein. Um, so I really challenge you to look at the ingredients label and also to question why you're consuming them. If you're adding some protein powder to your smoothies because you like the taste and because you want to, then great, keep doing that if that's what you want to do, if that's what works for you. However, if you're someone who you're adding it because you feel like you need to consume all this extra protein and you're spending a bunch of money on these high protein products and you don't really like them, you don't really think that they um, add value to your health, um, then I would really question whether or not you should keep consuming them. Because just like anything else, ideally you'd get all everything you need from wholesome fresh food. And if you're consuming a variety of foods, then like I said before, in addition to getting the protein, you should be getting all your nutrients. With that being said, I do have um, used some pro I have protein powder and I will use it sometimes. I'll just add either like a quarter scoop, a half a scoop, and that's because the protein powder has a multivitamin in it. So once a week, I'll add a little bit just to guarantee that I'm getting everything I need. Um, and even in like half a scoop, it's still like 10 grams of protein. <laughs> it's so much protein. Um, so that I also get if you're someone who you just want to add some just to ensure you're getting all your, because most of the protein powders, they have a multivitamin in it as well. Um, and so anyways, that's something to think about. I feel like a lot of that higher protein products or the companies that push this type of protein, this type of protein, they're like thriving on your insecurity of wanting to build muscle, feeling like you don't have enough muscle. And if you consume these high protein products, then you'll all of a sudden have all this muscle mass. Um, and granted, you do need protein in order to um, rebuild your muscle after working out. But as long as you're consuming some type of well-balanced meal or even a hearty, healthy snack within two hours of working out, then that's more than adequate. You don't need to buy a bar that has 30 grams of protein on it when like you worked out for 45 minutes. You just don't need that much protein. It's really not necessary. And those bars are so freaking expensive and you can spend so much money on them. 
and when you don't need them, when it's better for you to just go home and eat breakfast or go home and eat dinner, then that's what I encourage you to do. And I did make this video to bash protein. Um, I'll be the first to admit that protein is really important. I would just, I guess, wanted to put it out there that you maybe don't need as much as you think you need. And if you're someone who you're spending a bunch of money on these high protein products, then just calculate how much protein you need. And maybe just for like a day or two, don't do it every day because I don't want a problem to start, but maybe just for like a day or two, use some type of app where you can type in exactly what you eat and it'll tell you how much protein that you're consuming. And if you just do an average day, you don't even have to do it for a full day. Just go on one of the websites and type in what you typically eat for that day and it'll tell you how much protein. And more than likely, you're totally meeting your needs. I mean, a 140, 160 pound woman who goes on a 30 minute run and then lifts some weights afterwards doesn't need to be consuming all this protein powder. You know, like that's what our bodies were meant to do. Our bodies were meant to be active every single day. And if you're listening to your body, your body will tell you what you need. And I think that's another downside of feeling like we need all this protein because maybe after a workout, yeah, you need some protein, but at the same time, maybe your body really is craving some good fats. Maybe your body really wants some fat or maybe your body really wants some healthy carbs from fresh, wholesome ingredients. And so part of it is reevaluating. If you're someone who you're really pushing protein on yourself, evaluate why do I feel the need to consume all this protein? Do I actually need it? And what is my body telling me? So what does my body actually want? So kind of connecting your physical body to your mental body and figuring out the types of foods that your body really likes. For me, I thrive and I love consuming a plant-based diet. I don't consume any animal meats whatsoever, and I consume very little animal products, um, primarily just when I go out to eat or go to my friends' houses. Um, and that's what works for me, but I would never push that on anyone else. You know, if anyone wants to hear my story and why and um, what I eat and all that stuff, I'm more than happy to tell people but at the same time, I would never push that on anyone else because if it doesn't work for you, then you're not going to do it the rest of your life and you're not going to be healthy. You know, like if you're someone who you thrive better when you consume a totally different lifestyle or diet than I do and it works for you and you feel great and you have energy and you are healthy, then great, do what works for you. Um, but don't consume certain products or um, consume high protein foods just because you feel like that's what you need to do or that's what's being pushed on you. So really challenge y'all, read your labels, listen to your body, don't do things just because you feel like it's being pushed on you by marketing companies and by advertisements. Um, do what works for you, try not to get caught up in um, the mainstream media and what it's telling you is healthy, but instead listen to your body. So anyways, hope this video helped y'all out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Also, if there's any particular type of videos you'd like for me to make, then please leave those below as well. I obviously want to make videos that y'all want to see. <laughs> um, that's the whole point of me making videos. Um, anyways, also, if you're interested in a plant-based lifestyle, I'll leave a link to my book below. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one counseling and meal planning, so I'll leave all the links to that below as well. I hope y'all are doing well, y'all are fantastic, and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye.